Hello and welcome back to Farawa. In this video we're going to be making some flower themed crafts with stuff that you most likely already have both indoors and outdoors. For these first few crafts grab some flowers that you pressed all that while ago because we're going to do something with them. The summer rains have arrived, and with it, so have many blooming flowers and plants. The first craft will be floating flowers. Take some packing tape and lay it sticky side up. You might have to fold over the sides for tension so it stays and make sure you use a sticky resistant surface like like a non-stick surface like plastic or something that won't get damaged when you peel the tape up lay the plant on the tape away from the edges then lay another piece of tape sticky side down aligning it over the first piece as best you can flatten and smooth it and try your best to get out any air bubbles this one is a pretty easy shape but it depends how intricate you want to get when it comes to cutting around the petals Now you can study it closer without worrying about it falling apart or breaking. Here is another flower I did. They would make a nice addition to a pen pal letter to send preserved flowers back and forth, and even use as a bookmark. I normally store my dried flowers in a box like this, but they are fragile and do fall apart when I'm not careful, but especially if you like to study or draw plants, I think having a few of these to keep in a box or a tin as a little flower collection is very fun. Here's another place you can keep them. The next craft is a plant booklet. I used stiff plastic that comes on packages like art supplies or even berry containers, but a softer plastic like a Ziploc bag or something will also work just fine. But since so much of our products have plastic windows, I think it is a good way to find a new use for them. I made some more little tape flowers, which we'll be using later on. I cleaned off the glue and cut the plastic into business card size rectangles, but you can do whatever shape you want. I cut half of them that length, and then the other half of them I cut about an inch shorter. This is where we are leaving room to be able to slip the flowers in and out. Then I lined up a long piece and a short piece and taped the edges together, but leaving the short side untaped and not closing out in the end so you can slide the flowers in. Now I am hole punching the long side that is by the opening. To make sure the holes line up when I make more, I put the hole punched one on top of the new one and use a sharpie to mark where the holes should be. As I said before, any flat, clear plastic you have on hand should work. You can even make some with paper as one side if you don't want it to be clear on both sides. Then, once I was done, I took some string and fed it through to tie into a little booklet.
Now I can store some of the messier plants and keep them intact, like how dandelion puffs can get a bit difficult to manage once they start to fall apart. I like having this as a little plant log that I can go through at any time, and even to use to compare other plants. Of course, you can probably use this also with just your normal dried plants to keep them safe and not fall apart. You don't have to use the ones that you put tape on. I think this would be also really cool with autumn leaves. I just love the idea of having a plant journal where I can change out the plants and don't have to glue them down. And this is made from recycled parts too. The next craft is kind of a combination of the last two, flowers and catchers. I took some of the stiffer plastic and cut two pieces into a circle. It's probably a good idea to have a flower in mind first, but then I chose what flower I wanted to use. I like this one a lot, but I think this big buttercup takes up the space better. Now I'm hot gluing along the sides of the two pieces of plastic while the flower is inside. It's a bit slow because you need to wait for the hot glue to dry along the way, and don't burn yourself. I forgot to do this the first time, but leave a space big enough for your hole puncher to get through and hole punch near one end, then finish it off with the hot glue. Now if you want, you can paint the edges. I mixed this purpley color in acrylic and used a few coats until I was happy. Now you can take a ribbon, tie it through, and hang it up in the window or wherever you want. The rainbows are from a different window hanger that we have. I do wish these made rainbows, but they do make a pretty shadow and just look nice in the windows. But I think they would look really cool on a wall or a shelf or a ceiling, though they do look lovely when they catch the light. Also, some flowers fade in the sun. The buttercup's edges started to turn white after a few weeks, but the dandelion is fine. They could even be cool as a pendant, but maybe with a smaller flower and a smaller circle. I've decided to give this a go, so this plant pendant or charm is basically the same as the previous, just with a little modification. I went through my pressed flowers to find one that would work. Unfortunately, I left these roses in too long without checking them and they molded. But anyway, I'm grabbing the plastic from a container of berries and cutting it into a small circle. Then I hot glued the edges. Finally, I'm using a stitch ripper or any sewing needle that I heated with a candle to poke a hole in the plastic where I want the hook to go into. I decided I didn't like where I had hot glued before and wanted to make the circle a little bit smaller, so I cut it. Chose a different plant. Then I used the needle to hold them together. I just stuck it through both, hole both holes and used it to just keep it there in place while I hot glued around it. Then I found a few jump rings and with pliers attached them in. I had to make the hole a little bigger with a heated needle to make it fit perfectly.
Then I fed a necklace string through after untangling the knot. Of course you can paint the hot glue, just like with the other previous craft, but I do like the sparkly hot glue I chose. I really like this a lot as a necklace, or if you add just a hair tie, or a bracelet band, or even some beads, you can make a belt loop charm to keep you company throughout the day, or add a little extra accessory to your outfit. keychain, a wall hanger, something to go in the window, a bracelet charm, a hair tie charm, or even an earring. I just think these are so fun and I really really like this one. You can even attach it onto the end of a bookmark to add an extra charm or just use it in any place you would put a charm, which I feel like I listed a lot, but I'm sure there's more. Now for the next few crafts, we're going to be making some flower themed bookmarks so you don't have to use something like this paper towel I found in this book. First up is a floating flower bookmark. Like I mentioned before, you can certainly use a big flower on its own, but for this one, you will do the same as the first craft. Lay out a piece of packing tape, sticky side up, and arrange your flowers in the length that you want your bookmark. Then, put another piece of packing tape and try to line it up with the edges as best you can and press out any air bubbles. Then, trim off the ends and shape it how you want. I think it looks really cool like this, but I decided to try adding trim to the edges with washi tape. I tried hole punching it into the tape, but I don't think there was enough tension, so the tape kind of flexed with it and made it a bit wonky. So I added some washi tape to stiffen the layer and the hole punch turned out well. I then added ribbon and it was done. Next up is a blooming bookmark. Take a rectangle of paper, fold it in half, and then fold each side down over into the middle. Then trace a circle design on the inside of the two folded sides. If it's easier, you can do it on the outside too. Then design the shape of your flower on the half circle. Since these are folded over, they will be symmetrical on the other side when you cut it. Cut them out, and now they should line up symmetrically when folded. You can try out a bunch of different shapes. I just used some basic drawing paper, but stiffer paper might be a better idea. You can use watercolor on them, color pencil, marker, paint. 
Maybe not charcoal or like pastels because that'll probably get onto your books. You don't have to, but for some, I decided to tape the middle so they won't separate while I paint them. Now, paint your flower design. I did a leaf and two flowers, and I'm sure you could get even more creative with the leaves and flowers and layers, but here's what I have for now. Just stick them in the book, sticking out enough that they bloom from the pages. I had forgotten I didn't paint the bottom, so let me fix that. I used some marker, and they look better already. Now we're going to make a pressed flower bookmark. With the supervision of my cat, I'm using watercolors to make a design, but you can use whatever medium you want. For one, I just made a solid background, but for the other, I did some hills, a river, and some grass. Then I got my pressed flowers, and with some liquid glue, I glued them down where I wanted them. Let's just sit here in the forest. Make sure to coat them on the outside so they have less of a chance of flaking. And once they are dry, there's your bookmark. Similar to the other ones, of course you can punch a hole in the top and put a ribbon on to make it extra pretty if you want, but I just left these like this for now. Along very similar lines is the pressed flower art. It is essentially the same thing, but I chose to go a bit more detailed. I chose my flowers and did a base drawing with an idea of where I wanted to place them. With some cutting and arranging, I made this little fairy a skirt, top, hat, and set her in a flower field. Here is how they all turned out. I think the bookmarks, floating flowers, and flower art all look really lovely on the wall as well. Now for the final craft. We are going to be doing some flower hammering or flower pounding onto some fabric. I'm choosing this camisole because I don't wear it often because I felt the color was too close to my skin, so I think I either want to dye it or add some details. 
I collected some fresh plants and placed the bright side down onto the fabric and then used packing tape to tape them down. I put some cardboard between the layers to protect it from bleeding through and to give something to hammer on. Then I hammered on them until the color drained out from the plants. It took a lot, and I mean a lot of hammering. I used both a normal hammer and one with a round head as well. My arms felt big and strong afterwards. I tested out different leaves and plants, and I think mugwort and the ferns worked best of the leaves. I suppose I hammered them into the back, but it doesn't matter. I really like this one a lot. And now I'm going to go use some Sharpies to do some fi fixing up. After that, I decided to outline a few to give more definition. Then I put it in the dryer on high for 20 minutes and also ironed it. You don't have to do both, just one or the other, or just some heat on the designs should help let the ink sink in. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. That is all for the flower crafts. Overall, just experiment and have fun with it. This one is one of the crafts I had tried for the video but didn't work out how I'd hoped, but I'm sure someone else could do it really well. Now here is a little bonus story of what happened when I went out to collect these plants for the crafts. I thought this was just a, a petal, but it's actually a beautiful little white moth. beautiful like the way that it's little love you so much this is not for you sit down oh you're so good honestly it's kind of pot with the head on oh my gosh i love this little guy
prickly, but I'll take it. These ones are shaped like a heart. <laughs> Perfect. Let's get some little plantain leaves in there too because I think plantain is quite neat. There we are. Oh, hello. I think I will also fetch some buttercups. Look how tall these buttercups are. These are massive. That's how high they go. I think I'll also take some bugle weed because the bugle weed's going really fast. Um, I'll take you too. Also, yesterday there was a big black snake that was on top of the birdhouse in the woods. And so, hello, look at this. What, this is so funny. Do you see that flying guy right there? I always wonder why they do this. Like I keep seeing them like that. Oh, I'm, I'm mesmerized. Anyway, there was a big black snake in the woods and now it's gone. So I'm just gonna be a little careful and watch my stuff. Oh, they're all dead. The lilacs. But the roses are coming up. Here's the dead lilacs. Wow, they were so lively just a couple days ago. And here are the rosebuds. Oh Lord, oh Lord, that's a baby. Sorry, dramatic. And, oh, it looks like a butterfly. Hello. Sorry, I keep missing it with the camera. Where did it go? There, beautiful. Wow. Now that is a butterfly. The other thing was a moth. Cabbage moth. I believe this is a cabbage butterfly. Oh, it's gorgeous. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you found this helpful or at least entertaining and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye for now from Farwa.